See, y'all thought Micah was playing. You gonna realize it. it's not a game. The chess piece is back. Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys fan talk, right back, like I never left, what's good man, welcome back, camp day two recap, sorry I'm late, see if T work a job, it is what it is, um, I gotta get this news to y'all, now look, at this point, you probably watched about three or four, five, six, seven recaps, you been on Twitter, um, you probably following Nick Harris or Patrick Nosey Walker, my brother Jay Tuck, Vash Lombardi. Um, it's mad people out here giving you recaps. So I ain't about to tell you nothing. You ain't already heard. Probably. But if you just getting here and you want to hear my perspective, what, what, what CFT is thinking, you're in the right place. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on, man. Camp is going to be giving us information. It's, it's, it's like we went from the drought to content overload. It's too much going on. So I'm gonna try to go through my head of what's going on. Um, because of how late this video is coming out, I'm sorry, I don't have all the clips. You know what I'm saying? But you can, like I said, I just told you all the people, John Machoda, it's mad people, you can get the clips. But the perspective is why you're here. You wanna hear what CFT talking about, man? Saw sold separately. You only can get this here. But um, let's talk about this. First and foremost, Michael Parsons is sending a message. He is sending a message. Um, his weight is back down. He said last year he played around 250. He's back down to like 245. He said he's going to be moving all over the field. All over the field. The chess piece is back. I'm excited. I'm excited because, you know, I think we went from seeing Micah Parsons be so dangerous because he was game changing. It was like, wow, this player can play everywhere on the defensive side of the ball. Like literally rushing a gap off the edge, playing in coverage. Like his first couple years was just like Micah can play everywhere. Now, now we're going back to that. But the difference is the player that's going back to that type of versatility, he's smarter and he's angry. He's got a chip on his shoulder. When asked about, um, this is something I want to touch on. When asked about, um, one second, because I got a lot of stuff up here and I want to just talk about it. When asked about motivation, um, taking the sting out of the Green Bay loss, he said, if I could, I would keep Matt LaFleur's Pitcher in my locker every day. That's what I'm talking about. That law still sitting with this team. I heard Doc. I, I heard Dak reference it um, yesterday. Micah references now. Dak said, "Let's use it as motivation to move on." Micah saying the same thing. Let's move forward, but we ain't gonna forget. We gonna learn from our mistakes. I really, really love that. Um, another message that Micah was sending today. He was talking about um, Mozzie Smith and just how dominant he says, it's not what I think Mozzie can be. It's about what he has to be. He has to be dominant. He has to be a force. I'm in his corner. I'm rooting for him and pushing him to the limits of conditioning. And that's a message I got from Patrick O.C. Walker. Y'all can follow him on Twitter. I'm, you better know who he is, um, a.k.a. the voice of the star. My point is, Micah's taking a more of a leadership role. You would still confidence in your players. Remember how Micah reacted when we got Mozzie. I'm thinking that he's just letting Mozzie know I'm not out of your corner. I know you can be dominant. We need you to be dominant. You need that type of confidence behind you. Because I heard a lot of the things last year with Mozzie Smith. His confidence got away from him. And it is what it is, man. He's human. But let's get back to it. Let's get back to work. I see he got his weight back on. He's been working with um, the defensive line coach extensively on and off the field. I think Mozzie's up for a great year, great year. But the work starts here. I'm glad the first two days had me excited about Mozzie. Good, good things to hear. Um, another thing about today. Um, oh, let, well, let, let me close out the Mozzie, um, the Micah points. And I'm sorry I'll be all over the place. I might be a little bit long winded, but it's camp. It's a lot to talk about. Um, Micah Parsons is sending a message. You see the back of that sweatshirt? Um, sweatshirt, love me or hate me. I don't think Micah's out here to make friends anymore. That's what I like. I think Micah Parsons was very diplomatic, very, very, very communicative, very like, I love everybody-ish, teammates, other players from other teams, coaches. 
Yesterday I got the message, Mike is out there mad business, not mad friendly. Today, I'm just seeing like a different level of focus. Love me or hate me. I need that sweatshirt too, Adidas. Put put it on the website. Um, I think Micah just wants to send a message to the rest of the league, to his teammates, to everybody. I'm coming in about my business. I'm about my business this year. And he wants to let the play speak. Him being able to move around and being that dangerous. Like when you see Mike out there, he just look like he's moving at a different speed than everybody else. It's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. So I'm happy about that. It That, that makes me stand out. Like, make, like makes me excited. That stands out to me. Um, speaking of just the rest of the defense, man, the defensive back's been standing out, man. Um, I know y'all think I ain't going to speak on it. Dak Prescott intercepted two times a day. One by Jordan Lewis in the um, red zone, I believe. Another by Deron Bland. Picked off the ball cleanly, um, baited Dak a little bit, and it's great. I think it's amazing. And you know why? Because you want your corner that was all pro last year to still look like an all pro corner. You do not want him to look like he regressed or that it was just a one season thing. And for everybody out there, another thing I grabbed from Patrick Nosey Walker, because he be dropping gems, man. You just got to pick him up. Um, I'll put that on the screen. Basically, it says, no interception, Bland was a fluke. One year thing. Gets interception, now Dak sucks. Welcome back to low IQ football season. That's where we at, man. You can't win. Dak Prescott is going to have major dots in this 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 um, this camp. He's going to have amazing throws. The receiver is going to make great plays. But you also want to be able to say, my defense ain't no joke. You want your defense to, want to want, first of all, be good. And push the offense so we're ready when the season starts. This interception lets me know iron is sharpening iron. Dak Prescott all pro. Deron Bland all pro. Let's play. Back and forth. Last year, Dak Prescott had a bunch of interceptions in camp. What do you do? Go out there and become an all pro. So everybody take a deep breath. Except for the haters. Y'all can get mad and punch the air, punch the screen, throw your phone. I don't know what you're doing. But everybody else relax. It's all good. He going to throw more picks this camp. I promise you. Also promise you that he going to get wild busy when the season starts. So you got to pick a lane. Um, now that we talked about the DBs looking good, we can talk about Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert has been doing his thing. Um, great, great, great um, start to his camp. People are out there saying he looks like he could be a possibly a number one, definitely a number two, absolutely a number three. He's playing with confidence. He's in and out of his breaks with confidence. It's good to see, good to hear. I'm loving it. So Jalen Tober's out there doing his thing. Um, Ryan Flournoy, a rookie I wanted to see, definitely have some step up. He had a little little, little twinge um, and was on the sideline working with Britt Brown, but apparently he's fine. He said he worked through it. Um, we'll see how as extensive this injury is. Um, since he got drafted so late and there's so many good receivers in front of him, we're going to see how this camp works out for him. But I definitely want to see what he can put on the field before we write him off and think that he's going to be that Cowboys casualty of, um, yeah, the, the, your ankle hurt? Yeah, we'll see you next year. Y'all you, know how that go. Y'all know how the Cowboys do with IR. Um, Marshawn Nealon, man. I know I'm all over the place. It is what it is. Charges to the game. Marshawn Nealon is looking like he might have a, a special role with the team. He's not going to just sit out all year. He's going to play. Seen him at three tech so far. Seen him running with the ones off the edge. Um, and they're saying, um, shout out to Kyle Humans with the, the great um, recap. Kyle Humans is saying that that get off is looking mighty fast. Mighty fast. So I'm excited about that. Um, Micah and Nealon quick off the line. Like really quick. We know Micah Parsons is quick off the line. Marshawn Nealon is 270 pounds. So to hear he's quick off the line just gets me excited. Sam Williams sightings. Sam Williams is out there looking good. The D-line, I'm liking what I'm hearing out of the D-line. Now, look, it's first two days of camp. Pads ain't even on. Everybody relax. Take a deep breath. But it's good to hear. It's just good to hear. Um, I can't wait. I think Marshawn Nealon is going to be special. I think by the end of the year, we're going to be really excited that we took him in the second round and not feel bad about that pick at all. Um, what else happened? Um, Tyron Billy Johnson, um, Mr. Three Names, <laughs> Three First Names, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Um, his stock is rising. 
Um, he's been out there making some catches, doing his thing. Um, what else did I notice today? Like, I'm trying to pick up everything. Like I said, I know I'm, I came in late. Um, let me make sure I'm going through my little notes. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. We talked about Micah, talked about Mozzie, talked about the defense, um, talked about the message that Mike is sending. Um, I'm just excited, man. Also, let me touch on offensive line. Listen, Guyton still at um, second string. BB still at second string. Um, from what I'm hearing, like what I'm gathering, the BB and um, Brock Hoffman, that's a true battle. That's what I'm hearing. Um, they're saying that, 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 that Hoffman's getting his first crack at it, but BB will get a chance to, to, to maybe snatch that position from him. Um, he's working on his snaps today. They're saying that he was struggling with snaps yesterday. Like it's only two days. Um, but it's good to see, man. It's good to see, um, Cooper BB out there just doing some shotgun snaps, working on it, working with four, um, going to get comfortable for That's going to be your future center. No disrespect to Brock Hoffman. That's who I think is going to take this job. Um, they're saying that Guyton and Edoga is more of a just make the rookie earn it. I think it's stupid. Let him go get his reps with the starters. But listen, if that's just the way it's going to go. If the underlying tea leaves are saying he's going to start, cool. I just ain't going to play no game. Edoga do not need to be starting. But listen, yeah, because what did Edoga do? Uh, I'm about to go on a tangent. Never mind. But listen, I'm excited about the things that's going on in camp. Another, they back at it tomorrow, um, live stream tomorrow. Um, I'll keep digging for more information, but I just had to touch base with y'all real quick. Talk to y'all about this Micah stuff that got me really excited, man. The chess piece is back. You know what I'm saying? He, he said, you got to come find me now. You can't just say he's going right off the left edge. Let him rush. We're not going to block him. You can't do that no more. Them days is over. You got to find the lion. It's your boy, Mr. Rome. I'll holler.